can drag this thing at a 500 pound lateral uh, force than this the static friction you know you you could have 30,000 pounds here but you're not basically you're not basically using the full 30,000 pounds right um, so in this video what what I really want to focus in on and drive the point home is this if you want to get the full 10 that like right in this I got 2500 pound blocks so this is basically a 10,000 pound weight if I want to get the full 10,000 pound force out of this weight this concrete must be set on a rubber mat this concrete must be set on a rubber mat that causes the coefficient of static friction to be such that if I try to pull this it will I'll have to pull at a 10,000 pound force in order to get this to slide across the ground and it becomes a very critical uh, factor when you're on top of something like asphalt and this this uh, parking lot at the Indiana State Fair that's exactly what they had up here and coefficient of static friction is a a matter of life and death in this situation and I'm going to show you why it's such a critical factor here at, at this location site specific hazard specific, you know so uh, what doesn't show up in this picture this is a satellite imagery by the way what doesn't show up here is that this this parking lot is at a higher elevation than this road right here. So once these blocks start to move, start sliding, overcoming the static friction, they'll go. They're going to be end up going down a hill. Okay, so that is uh, that's really bad as far as static friction. In other words, um, it's not only going to start sliding, but it's going to start sliding with absolutely no resistance at all which is exactly what that stage looked like once it got moving it was just absolutely uh, it was down within what you know does anybody actually ever time it like a quarter of a second maybe a third okay because once you overcome the coefficient of static friction the uh, acceleration takes over okay so uh, these rubber mats and these uh, concrete rate weights are critical and the rubber mat sits underneath the concrete on, let's say, asphalt. But there's a there's a deceptive factor in doing it this way. If this stuff gets wet, that coefficient of static friction goes to to where 70 percent of that weight will disappear. Okay, let me say it a different way. If I took a forklift or if I took a diesel truck and I tried to drag this ten thousand pound. Uh, block of four I could do it with 3,333 pounds going sideways if this thing is wet okay so what that means is your 30,000 pounds of, of uh, counteracting force here then becomes uh, 9,000 about 10,000 pounds all right so it drops way down if you get it wet so if you're going to use this type of barriers uh, you've got to keep this stuff dry, but there may be a possibility of finding rubber mats that are soft enough and possibly recycled tires so that it's so coarse and so uh, resistant to sliding that even if it was wet, it may still retain about 80% of its uh, ability to prevent this from sliding. Okay, so there it's going to need some possible uh, some civil engineering research and civil engineering research or construction or mechanical research uh, engineering. Uh, there, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers does research on I know soils and there are materials research facilities where this type of thing could be done very easily this could be done in a couple hours they could do some research on this okay and figure out you know which type of rubber uh, is resistant to this and the reason I'm I'm, I'm still going with these uh, weights is because county fairs are notorious for having uh, medians I mean it's something counties use for road repair okay so these things are laying around and even at even at the uh, uh, Indiana State Fair they were right in front of the stage so th there's an abundant supply of these and they've got a, a boom truck so it's something that that can be uh, constructed uh, gathered together in very short order um, and when I count I think I added up all these I think there's like 13 times 4 
of these medians. So I, I guess it would be because the the uh, truck loading weight is so great with these concrete weights, you two flatbeds full. I would just about estimate that. But if you'll notice, every one of my weights are on rubber mats. Okay, and uh, this is one way to anchor it. But there is also another way where you could actually. Um, you know, this stage is here. It's been here since the Be- I think the Beatles did a show in Indiana, so 19 1960s. Um, and the reason I'm I'm bringing that up is, you know, why not just pile drive some uh, I beams down back here, okay? And if if you pile drive some I beams, and you know this stage is going to be here for the next, you know, ten to twenty years, and it's going always going to be the same setup. Uh, Make some permanent uh, anchors, you know, and they, they don't have to be right down to the ground. And what, what's really kind of a bummer is these lines are blocking. Uh, I would think they would have some restriction to the traffic flow or, or there would be like, I noticed that in, there was one of these videos of the Indiana State Fair and they had these buses lined up here, right? Like, like people were bused in and then the buses were parking right here, you know, and what are the odds of one of these buses running into these lines? You know, and you've got that uh, logistics problem, uh, safety coordinator type individual <laughs> to manage that, and I can see a potential problem there. So it's it's almost begging for uh, pile-driven I-beams uh, right here, here, and here, and you can have them up, off, up out of the ground like 10 feet, and then these lines could be connected to these a pile driven I beams that could be down into the earth like twelve feet. Okay? And now you're talking about some uh a serious dedication to safety. All right. In, instead of just uh you know cowboy in it or you know wild westing it. <laughs> so uh but uh that that's pretty much all I've got for this specific uh um Part two, I, I do want to show a photograph of what the stage looked like last year, and I am very, very humbled and upset, and, you know, the big question mark in my mind is why. Um, this is a photograph of that same stage last year, and you can see right there, you know, there's the Indiana State Fair sign, but if we look at the bracing, we can see that this is much more of a uh, strong design, and and they've got cross break bracing uh, going on, and they've got double horizontal uh, buckling uh, resistance to buckling uh, compression buckling uh, horizontal uh, braces right here, and I don't get it. I don't get it. What what was someone thinking when this stuff was removed? I would love to to hear that conversation. You know, um, did someone think it was ugly? You know, and I and I've been uh, I've been around. You know, I, I I know what happens with safety. I know what people think. I know what administrators the kind of comments people make that absolutely have no education in engineering and safety. And the types of comments they would make, you know, oh, I don't think it looks as attractive or, or, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, am I completely off my game there? Is it possible that somebody just didn't think it was attractive or maybe something didn't fit? You know, is it possible some type of lighting thing needed to, to extend a little further? You know, why would you remove this? I, I just, I don't get this. And it was my understanding that this was added in in order to to uh, beef this stage up to bring in bigger shows, uh, weightier systems. But why take it down? You know, it was engineered for heavier duty, and uh, were they just thinking that okay, now that be- because we don't have the big weights, uh, we don't have these massive weights to deal with, we don't really need that safety, and you know, I did a I did a traversing over Google Earth, and they are just south of Chicago, for God's sakes. The winds, Chicago, come on, windy city of Chicago. Um, I don't get this. 
I just don't get this. And, uh, you know, I, it's not out of disrespect for these people. Cause I want you to, I want, I want to make this clear, you know, um, I was just talking to a friend of mine cause I do, I do recordings and I also run sound. I was willing to spend $60 and have a, a, a season pass to my local state fair because the best audio engineers come out of Nashville, you know, and I wanted to go see every show and just to hear, you know, the way they're mixing. And it, it's, it's a great opportunity. And I, I've always learned a lot every, when I go to my state fairs and the best people in the industry, um, in the world are doing these shows. And, you know, I don't get this, but I'm clashing with decisions because, you know, I have respect for these people and I'm, you know, the audio portion and, you know, the great mixes and the clarity and all that stuff is like second to none. But, you know, I used to be a safety coordinator. I've taken engineering classes. I've done AutoCAD and, you know, I don't get this. These people know better. It's like, you know, was there somebody involved in decision making that was an administrator that maybe didn't like the way it looked? You know, I'm I'm kind of thinking it might be something like that because I just know the types of stupidity in administration uh, that, that you know people make comments and they they request things and maybe. Uh, you know, you, you, you're trying to please everyone and maybe the safety kind of takes a step back for one day. And the and when you let your guard down, you know, <laughs> it comes up and bites you, you know. And so um, I don't get this, but I was relentless in trying to answer the question, why after I did my mathematical calculations on the, on the uh, statics uh, – of this structure, I could not believe that somebody would, would construct something like that without more uh, cross bracing and resistance to the thing falling down. And when I found this picture, I had my answer. Okay. And I, and I just could not believe it because it's a simple calculation. Um, first year engineering, you're going to take statics classes. Um, and, you know, I just, I just, it couldn't wrap my brain around this. So I'm still, you know, asking the question, why, why would you put this up and then take it down? You know, I don't get that. And, and, and then, and then the other thing is the audio people for this sound company, they know this and, and nobody thought about when the weather started turning bad and they're still sending people up the rung. It's like, was that band so headstrong in basically taking it over or was the sound guy told that the touring management has control of the stage you know is that what's going on here because um this is this is bizarre it, it, yes there was an accident but it's the it's the technicals and the management and the decision making and the choices made that i am just totally dumbfounded okay and and I want to end this by saying, you you people are the best in the world, okay? And you're perfectionist. I mean, I, I'm working in a recording studio right now. And it's like, we are down to the gnats we're in <laughs> on the way we mix. I mean, we are perfectionists. We, we got to get the, you know, we're down to 1 dB increments sometimes, getting the EQ right, you know? And I know an audio engineer thinks that way. And they're perfectionists and they want things to be right. I don't get this. This doesn't add, it's not in your, uh, you know, you're better than this. See, and that's, that's what really drives me crazy about this whole accident. You know, was somebody involved in decision makings that had the authority and said, you know, and, and someone just without thought just said, let the road manager be in charge, you know, or let, let this person make the decision or, you know, I, I'm beginning to, you know, feel that way. I just cannot... I can't point the finger because I know that you guys are competent and you're, you're able to do this stuff. And, and like I said, man, you're the people that I like look up to, you know, and county fairs or if you're going to see people from Nashville mix a great mix, you go to the county fair. All right. You want to hear how those drums should be tuned. Try to get around the back of the stage and listen to the drums coming off the stage. That's, that's how, that's how I learned to perfect my ability as a sound guy. All right. And, um, 
So I'm not coming at this trying to point fingers. I just don't ever want to see this happen again. And um, I hope this does something, okay? So I don't even want to thank people for watching. I just I, I don't I just want you to just, you know, do something about this. Step up to the plate. Get involved. If you're a technician, you're a, you're an electric the electrician guy's been doing this for 20 years, all right? Last year you you know, you noticed something was different, you know? Um and then when you see the storm kind of thing, you know, but you know, th here's the reality. This has never happened in America. This has never happened to us before. Nothing of this magnitude. We are not even thinking of this. It's not in our consciousness. Even after all of my research and crunching all my numbers, it took me I probably spent, you know, 30, 40 hours trying to understand how to even approach this. And I had to crack the books. I got my statics, you know, math books out here. And just to get it, to get my brain wrapped around this accident. Um, and this is after the fact. For somebody to even uh, expect anticipate it would be completely outside of your consciousness outside of your thinking in fact if you go back and look at all the comments about the weather report people were thinking oh well we'll just you know nonchalantly we'll just kind of come and pick it up after the weather passes by it wasn't even in anyone's consciousness to think that this could happen okay um, we don't sail boats we don't think about the forces of wind on sails so you know that's been out of our consciousness for hundred years, if not more. Okay. So, um, history is bound to repeat itself, but it's because of our memory. It's because of our history and that, um, you know, we don't think that way. We don't, it's not in our consciousness. And like I said, after all the research that I did to try to wrap my brain around this and I started to do the, it wasn't until I actually did the statics problem where I did the, um, counterweights to see the magnitude of what it would take to hold this stage up that I just, I was a, I was completely dumbfounded. It's like these engineers would have done the numbers and yes, there is a better way to build this stage. And here it is in this photograph. Okay. And I knew that there, I knew that something wasn't right in the construction and how, and, and the thing that didn't add up to me was it was a simple calculation. Any audio engineer who has a civil engineering degree or has taken any engineering class or any math classes could have done the calculation. And it's a simple calculation. An electrician could do the calculation, you know, and you can go on the internet and look it up. It's simple. There's so many people could have, could have thought this through and known about it. And that's the thing that just doesn't add up to me. The, you know, these people are the best. They're, they're awesome. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible when I, when I add that in there. So that's all I got for this one.